guys, my name is Blue Digit, and today we are on to part two of three random SCPs. Now, um, I found again another list of three, and um, hopefully these are good. Uh, I th I'm pretty sure one of them I already know, but uh, it's a good one. So I hope you guys enjoy this, and uh, let's move on to the first one. All right, guys. So this is our first one. This is SCP-174. Um, this is uh, object class Euclid. And before I even start, if you guys haven't already, please go watch the first one if you want to be caught up on any other things I might be discussing in this one, such as ratings and whatnot. But um, if not, and you just want to keep watching, let's go. So, object class Euclid. Um, special containment procedures. SCP-174 is to be contained within a storage unit. 07 at site 19. Removal of SCP-174 from containment re uh, requires the approval of two level 4 personnel uh, familiar with this, uh, the entity. It is preferable to use personnel with high psy uh, psychic resistance. Hmm. Um, scale scores 1 interacting with SCP-174. All personnel in contact with SCP-174 are to undergo uh, psychological evaluation. Those who display obsessive or protective tendencies towards the item are to be treated with class B anesthetics and um, monitored for 72 hours. Um, the following incident, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so uh, onto the description. So SCP-174 is a wooden ventriloquial figure measuring 53 centimeters from head to toe with somewhat ragged clothing and slight damage to several sections. Um, judging by the item's style and state of repair, it dates from the early 20th century. The eyes and mouth of SCP-174 can be manipulated by the means of a mechanism inside the figure. So basically, it's a, it's a ventriloquist dummy. When viewed in peripheral vision, subjects report on occasion that SCP-174 is looking directly at them with an expression of longing or sadness. When subjects looked directly at SCP-174, the anomalous expression is not visible. Viewing SCP-174 in, uh, indirectly, such as in a mirror or live video feed, appears to increase the likelihood of this effect manifesting itself. Personnel in the vicinity of SCP-174 report a feeling of sadness or sympathy towards the uh, figure, but cannot explain any reason for these feelings. Prolonged exposure can lead to personnel personifying the figure to greater extents. Those with particularly low psychic resistance scores will in some cases begin to act as if SCP-174 were a living being, um, such as cradling it as if it were a baby. When informed of the abnormal behavior, all personnel revert to standard behavior patterns for at least several minutes. That's fucking weird. Okay. Um, subjects who place SCP-174 on their hand report an urge to converse with it. When questioned, they frequently report that the figure is lonely and needs companionship. The, uh, the subject will begin speaking for SCP-174 and manipulating its expression. When speaking for the figure, the subject's voice will take on a higher-pitched, childlike tone. Recordings taken will, um, with high-sensitivity microphones have determined that at no point does the figure itself actually speak or make any discernible noise. Regardless of the subject's experience, the act will almost be perfect. The conversation will quickly move towards a discussion of, emo uh, of the figure's emotional state, particularly in relation to its past, in most cases leading to the retelling by the figure of a story of how it was abandoned or mistreated. No one, um, no one story has ever been repeated, and therefore which, if any, is true is unknown. Researchers have theorized that SCP-174 may have low-level telepathic abilities. Uh, um, as each story seems to be based around a theme that will have particular resonance with the current subject. Okay. Past this point, subjects will show great affection for SCP-174 and will attempt to protect it from people who come too close or try to interact with it, in some cases with deadly force. Subjects often refer to SCP-174 as their baby or use similar uh, strong terms of endearment when uh, referring to it. This effect persists for several hours after SCP-174 and the subject have been separated, and in at least one case, the effect had not dis dissipated uh, two weeks after the final interaction. Whether the effect would ever have lessened is unknown, as the subject is in question was terminated oh, owing to lack of compelling reason for further study. Um, subjects who are completely 
isolated from SCP-174 will become paranoid as the figure's safety, um, <clears throat> as to the figure's safety, and often undergo a mental collapse similar to that observed in the mother separated from their young children. Class B or stronger um, anesthetics have been shown to be effective in curing both the obsessive effect and the majority of the uh, resultant mental trauma. Um, however, almost all who undergo such treatment complain of feeling of loss and become depressive. Interesting. Interesting. What's this? Um, experiment log. Um, transcription of video footage. Subject. D. Female 21. No history of violent crime. Um, supervising researcher Dr. Blank. Location. Containment cell A4. Um, researcher and staff observing from behind two-way mirror. Site 19. D blank 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 is ordered to place SCP-174 on their hand. Subject does so after initial hesitation. After uh, several seconds, subject begins to mundane begins a mundane conversation with SCP-174. After two minutes, the subject takes SCP-174 or, or asks SCP-174, "What happened to you?" At which point, the figure begins to recount a story of how he was left behind and damaged in a house, and subsequently discarded by its original owner. Um, subjects record indicate that her house was a victim of an arson fire in 19 blank blank. Um, subject begins to console the figure and reassure it with standard positive statements. Figure remarks that it is lonely and wants to find friends. Subject begins to punch and pound the door with her free hand, uh, with a free hand. When guards enter the cell, sidearms raised, the subject recoils to the corner of the cell, cradling the figure and whispering to it. Exact words not picked up by the microphone. Guards succeed in removing SCP-174 from the subject and leave the cell. At this point, the subject screams, "They have him, my wonderful baby, and begins punching and kicking the door in a futile escape attempt. At, um, no, at this point, Dr. Blank ordered the experiment concluded. D. Blank Blank was terminated after attempts to calm her failed. Uh, oh my god. Wow. Um... Incident 174A, Dr. Blank entered storage unit 07 to find SCP-174 sitting on the floor next to its containment cell, looking directly at the main entrance door. The door to SCP-174's unit had been sealed shut, with no access having been logged in the previous week. After being placed in containment, video surveillance was installed within storage unit 07 as precaution against future um, translocations, and a GPS tracking unit was attached to SCP-174. Uh, so if, essentially, this is you know an evil ventriloquist dummy. I wouldn't say well, okay. I wouldn't say evil. My, I, let me take that back. It's a haunted one, right? And by that last log, it, it, it kind of confirms that the the being can move. It can kind of have some kind of psychological effects as well, and um, clearly, it is. I I would say I would say that um, there is some kind of being within it, right? So um, I like this one. I like this one a lot. I like dolls. I like dolls um, when it comes to horror, just because they have this very uncanny feeling. But this one, I like how I didn't go down the 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 normal rabbit hole of oh, it's scary doll. Oh, it's scary doll. What I decided to do was actually have something that's psychological within it that um, actually, I would say, impaired those that were around it. And I really enjoy that. It was almost like a, uh, it was almost like a shy guy kind of thing. The, you know, the, the other SCP, except opposite. So instead of running towards you particularly, it was running towards, um, you know, the doll because it wanted to protect it and keep it, right? And I found that very interesting, almost as if, like, you know, this SCP is kind of like a leech, you know what I mean? Um, almost some kind of, like, parasite that, like, you know, makes its victims care for it. And because of that, it almost uses that. And I find that very fucking cool. I find that very, very fucking cool. It's like, it's like almost, it's always playtime. That's fucking scary. Uh, that's fucking scary. And I also enjoy how on uh, object class up here, which I just noticed this, by the way. Instead of safe, they changed it to Euclid because they thought they understood it until you know the very end there. So I I, I very much enjoy this SCP. Um, I won't say it's the most original just because you know it's it's a fucking ventriloquist dummy. There's scary doll things all the time, but the ending there 
and especially the way that, you know, they actually made it seem like an SCP, not just some bullshit, I would probably give this like a 6 out of 10. 6, 7. 6 or 7 out of 10. It was pretty good. It was pretty good. It wasn't the most amazing, but, you know, I would definitely be like, hey, this is pretty cool, you know what I mean? So I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it very, um, very wholesome. So, anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed that one. Let's move on to the next one. All right, guys, we're back, and this is SCP-2 that we found um, for our random SCPs, and um, this one is SCP-463. Um, very short. I enjoy that, though, and um, you can kind of look through the testing log for us to find out more about it. Um, not many people have seen this, apparently, so maybe you're one of the few. Uh, let's jump in. Well, I guess I'll be one of the few, too. So, item SCP-463, object class, safe. Special Containment Procedures SCP-463 is to be maintained in the small glass display case within the containment cell at site blank. If SCP-463 must be transported from its current location, it should be transported in its display case or some other container. At no time should any Foundation researchers come into direct physical contact with SCP-463 following the incident of blank blank blank. Personnel are strongly discouraged from bringing food of any sort into SCP-463 um, cell. Description. SCP-463 is a small silver spoon, approximately 17.5 centimeters in length, and a mass of approximately 4. Um, 153 grams. Unless handled by a human, SCP-463 um, SCP displays no abnormal behavior. Um, neutron imaging, MRI, and redacted imaging system have revealed no detail of inner structure. All analysis of SCP-463 is consequently limited to its directly observable effects. Any individuals who pick up SCP-463 have their spines bent backwards at a 90 degree angle. What the fuck? Just below the T6 thoracic vertebrae. This bending typically proves fatal. Although some test subjects have survived with full lower body paralysis, its effects on humans is displayed regardless of whether or not the subject is wearing gloves, oven mitts, or any such barrier. The only apparent requirement for SCP-463 to be able to bend its holder is that the subject have a firm grip. Subjects who have held SCP-463 very weakly um, i.e. with just the tips of their fingers, have been unaffected. Testing has demonstrated that SCP-463 displays no unusual effects when it comes in contact with um, autonomous machines, remotely um, machines controlled, uh, controlled machines, animals, or corpses. Okay. Wow. It is the opinion of Dr. Blank that SCP-463 does not actually, um, does not actually physically bend the user, but has somehow been embedded with a psych psychic trigger. Interesting. Which causes the user's back muscles to violent violently contract. This would explain the absence of SCP-463's effect when handled by non-humans. <sighs> this is a really fucking good one. Holy shit. Okay. Um, SCP-D something something is placed in proximity of scp 463's unlocked container SCP um you know subject D backs muscles were surgically removed from its body during surgery for spinal oh fuck um D is instructed to pick up the SCP subject experiences bending of the upper spine subject goes into neurological shock what subject declared clinically dead body removed from testing site holy shit okay Subject D uh, wheelchair is placed in proximity of SCP-463 unlocked container. Subject D has already been uh, has already had a complete fracture of uh, C5 vertebrae and has no um, neuromuscular connection to any muscle uh, muscles below the neck. Um, researcher using tongs places SCP-463 in D hand. Right? SCP experiences non-fatal bending of the upper spine. May, uh, minor um, injuries are sustained as a result of falling from a wheelchair. Mm, okay, so he survived. Um, subject D for the next test is uh, placed in proximity of the SCP. Unlock container. SCP D has been paralyzed below the waist for prior interaction. Mm. 
Um, subject becomes highly agitated and attempts to remove herself from the testing chamber. An armed guard is called to the testing chamber to ensure compliance of D. The D subject is in, um, instructed to pick up the SCP. Subject does not comply. And instructed does not um, comply. Um, subject D is instructed by the armed guard to pick up the SCP. Subject experiences non-fatal bending of the spine about the T6 uh, thoriatic vertebrae. No further in uh, injuries are sustained. Subject removed from testing site. Okay. Um. Oh my god. Memo. It would seem that SCP-463 does not indeed exert a direct force on the user's spine. Sadly, we have absolutely no clues as to the nature of the force. We don't even know what the net torque is. I think the next course of action should be to test SCP-463, a personnel from whom the spinal column itself has been removed. Further testing is clearly in order. Holy shit! I love this one. I, fi I find this one fucking funny. I fucking- I don't know, I, I fucking love this one. So, first off, it goes against most rules of SCP, right? It's, it's a, uh, it's known as safe, right? Basically, and if you guys don't know already, when uh, it comes to SCPs, Safe doesn't always mean safe. What the object classes mean is um, how well it's understood and can be um, contained, right? So this is safe because it's a it's understood, very understood. You know what it is. It can obviously you know basically bend your back, and it's contained. So you know you kind of you kind of got the gist. But here's the thing that's really cool about this, and that's why I like this one. Um, first off, it's fucking ironic because you know how you fucking want to bend a spoon. Well, basically this spoon. And this one is kind of like revenge. It's like fuck you. This is what you get. And um, I find that very fucking messed up. I find that very messed up. But here's the thing that I really uh, that's really cool too. That um, I enjoy from this one. Um, it apparently it's psychological. So it's not like the spoon's like fucking doing it exactly like to you to you. It's literally like triggering something in your brain to do that. I find that very fucking cool, because, you know, a lot of times, you know, you'll have fucking kids that, like, they'll grab a spoon and they'll just fucking bend it, right? So, maybe it's this inherent idea that is manifesting in you. And I find that so fucking just smart and witty and fucking cheesy and everything. Like, this is, the, this is fucking great. This is what I want to see in an SCP, you know what I mean? Um, it's not inherently scary, but, like, at the same time, it is fucking creepy. You know what I mean? So, um, overall, I'd probably give this a, um, hell, maybe an 8 out of 10. I give this one a fucking 8 out of 10. It's pretty solid. Pretty fucking solid. Yeah. Um, I'll give the last one, like, a 7 out of 10. This one's getting an 8 out of 10, because this one's fucking great. I don't see anything wrong with this one. Um, so I hope you guys enjoyed the second one. Tell me guys what you think. Uh, as part of the video, if you haven't already, maybe sub. And let's move on to our last fucking SCP. Let's hit it. Alright, folks. Welcome to our last, uh, SCP for the night. Um, this is SCP-2571. And, um, this is a really fucking short one. So interesting but i guess i guess we're just gonna um do this and also has a video log which is very interesting very interesting i haven't really seen that before so let's just look through this so scp 2571 scp item 2571 object class euclid interesting um special containment procedures a foundation operated bot um i slash o mandula is to monitor online community uh communities for discussions regarding scp 2571 MT5, uh, F57, the laughing stock, is to investigate these discussions and make a determination for appropriate action on a case-by-case -case basis. Description. SCP-2571 is a recurring child's memory of a non-existent theme park, Craigelwood Park. It is estimated that 0.05% of the world's population is affected by SCP-2571. However, recent evidence suggests that this number may be growing. The primary vector for SCP-2571 spread is not yet known, notably. It appears to be the most common among adults raised as an only child. Um, afflicted subjects are initially responsive um, to anesthesia, uh, 
and medic anesthetics. I, I, I can't fucking read. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, but memories regarding regular wood will typically resurface once treatment ceases. Although description of these memories vary, several details remain constant. Subjects were between the age of four and twelve when they visited. The park featured numerous uh, characters, primarily centered around an anthropomorphic variants of trees and plants. Okay. Um, no adult supervision was present. Uh, Calico music played throughout the park. Hmm. Um, subjects attend the park with numer uh, numerous other children, none of whom they knew. Um, the park featured only one ride, a carousel, or a merry-go-round. Although children accompany, uh, accompanying the subjects for this ride, the subjects themselves did not. Interesting. Investigations regarding the precise nature of both SCP-2571 and Craigle Park are ongoing. This is fucking weird. This, it doesn't even tell you really much about it. Interviews, maybe? Weird, okay. Um, date 2002. Oh, actually, gives you it gives you a good amount. Okay, cool. Um, Dr. Reiner is the interviewer, and the subject is Rupert Dukak. Dukox? I don't know. I can't. I, I'm just going to say Rupert and Reiner, right? So, <clears throat> Reiner. What do you recall about... Well, let me, let me read the mic closer. There we go. What do you recall about Craigslewood Park? Jesus. Is that what this is about? It's just this nightmare I used to have. Can you, uh... Library. I mean, I think it's it's probably based on some actual theme park I went to it as a kid. You know, probably traumatized the shit out of me. What happens in the nightmare? I enter this uh, theme park. It's like Disneyland, but smaller. There's no rides, just this long, winding road through the woods. Everything's bright and colorful, like in a cartoon. And there's these trees all around me, but... Tell me about these trees. They've all got faces, and they're singing. They've got these dopey, cheerful looks. Like in one of those uh, old-time cartoons, right? And they just sing and laugh and sing. Can you tell me anything else? There's this uh, music that's playing everywhere. It's like an organ music, but not the kind you hear in church. More like the, the sort you hear in a carnival. You mentioned before that there aren't any rides. Uh, no, wait. Um, no, I'm wrong. There, there's rides, just... There's one ride. Just one ride. It's that thing with horses that goes around in circles. Uh, you know what I'm talking about. The carousel. Right. Th that thing. It's where the organ music is coming from. Were you alone? No. There's other kids with me. They're not happy to be there either. We're all smiling and laughing. But we're just doing it to stop ourselves from crying. You know? To fool the trees. So the trees don't know how scared we are. To keep the trees happy keep them happy yeah is there anything else you can tell us um fuck i don't know i haven't dreamed about this place in ages <laughs> i i think there's one bit near the end please react take as much time as you need subject closes his eyes just just as i'm getting ready to leave i see something a tiny tree sprouting up near my foot looks up at me it's smiling, smiling with that big, dopey, happy grin. When I see it, that's when I start screaming. That's when I wake up. Why does that tree make you scream? Subject opens his eyes, because it has my face. Okay. On to the next interview. This is Dr. Reiner with Janine. Jane, I can't, I can't fucking read, bro. Alright, let's get this to go. Reiner, do you ever ride the carousel? What? <laughs> Hell no, are you crazy? What happened when you reached it then? Some of the kids got on, not me though. The ones who did, some of them were smiling. Some of them were crying. Some of them hugged the ones who didn't get on. Some of them huggy, hugged each other. What happened then? They rode the carousel. Then we left. What happened to them? <laughs> How should I know? We left. You left them behind? Yes, we left them behind. But what do you think we should have done? Stuck around? See, this is all going to turn out... I'm sorry, 
I didn't mean to accuse you of anything. You were just a child. No one would have expected you to. That's right. I was just a goddamn child in the middle of a goddamn nightmare. And I just... I, I just... I just... You have no idea what you're even talking to me about. What you're even doing to me. Or, or, or how it's making me feel. I don't want to talk about it. I just want to forget it. Why can't you just let us... Let us be. Subject lowers head into hands. I'm sorry. I just... You don't need to apologize. Oh, oh no, I read that wrong. Um, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just... You don't need to apologize, Miss Yearling. You've clearly gone through a deeply traumatizing experience. Subject sobs. I just... I just... Uh, I just don't understand. I can't imagine you would. Nothing about this experience makes much sense. Subject. Choked sobs. Not that. It isn't that. It's just... What is it? One of the kids. One of the kids that got on. Yes. Why... Why did he hug me? I didn't... I didn't even know who he was. I don't get this at all. I don't fucking... I can't even think of, like, a reason. or It's just... I don't know. It's not... It's just weird. It's not fucking scary to me. It's just fucking weird. Okay, um, here's the last one. Uh, Randolph with Dr. Reiner. Begin log. I'd like to talk to you about the video cassette. Christ. I understand that this is... You know, you people just don't get it. I don't want to discuss any of this with you. Fuck, I, I shouldn't have let... I have told my therapist any of this. <laughs> that fucking bitch. Please, Dr. Blair. Or Mr. Blair. I, I need you to focus. Get on with it. This cassette. Where did you get it from? I, I don't know. I don't, I don't fucking know. I found it in my attic when I was cleaning shit out. I thought it was just an old copy of Ghostbusters or something. Do you recognize of the, uh, any of the images on it? I don't know. Yeah? From nightmares? Bullshit like that. Ma maybe someone showed me the tape as a kid. Have you lived in the house your whole life? Yeah? You were raised in this house by your parents? Yeah! This going somewhere? The front bedroom. Look, I don't want to talk about this shit, okay? I understand, but we need to understand what's going on, Mr. Blair. Why is the front bedroom... I don't know! I don't fucking know! It's always just had shit in it! But nobody uses it, that's just why I kept it locked, okay? I, I don't think about it! I understand, Mr. Blair, I, I just need to ask. Are we done? I just need to ask one more question. Whatever. Mr. Blair? Have you always been a normal child? Subject refuses to respond. End of log. Now, there's a video log here. What the fuck is that image? What the fuck is that image? Fuck that image, bro. This is, is this when it gets bad? Oh, fuck. This one it gets bad. All right. Oh, date. Test and four. Oh, six. Ten. The following log describes the contents of a mini video cassette found in the uh, possession of Randolph Blair. The word Craiglewood is written across its label in black felt tip marker. One second. Heavy breathing. Five seconds. Shaky image of gravel path leading to, uh, through a forested region. Ten seconds. Distant uh, calico music. I, I'm, I'm sorry if I'm not pronouncing these words right. 21 seconds in. View swivels to focus on other children's walking down the path. So move hand in hand. 32 seconds in. View points towards the gravel. 30, 36 seconds in. Quiet sobbing. 39 seconds in. Voice one. I'm scared. 41 seconds in. Voice 2. Shh. It's okay. It's okay. Don't cry. You have to smile. You have to. 55 seconds in. Distance, distance singing. 50, uh, 58 seconds in. Voice 2. Smile. Smile. Please just... Just smile. It'll be okay. I promise. I'll, I'll take care of... 1 minute in. In 2 seconds. Stack in. 1 minute in. And 9 seconds in. Blurred image. 
One minute, 10 seconds in, distorted singing and calico music. One minute in and 15 seconds, deep cheerful laughing. One minute, 20 seconds, singing and music intensify. One minute and 25 seconds, whispering voice two. Oh God. One minute, 26 seconds, static. One minute, 30 seconds, approximately a dozen children are standing around the carousel. One minute, 32 seconds, voice one, whispering. What's happening? One minute, 35 seconds, voice two, whispering. Shh, just one minute, 39 seconds, singing intensifies. One minute, 42 seconds, voice two. Oh God. 45, one minute, voice one, whispering. What are they? What are they? Listen, you have to. Do you lowers to the gravel? Voice two. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, you have to go. You have to. No, you aren't. Two minutes, five seconds. Singing intensifies. Sound of children sobbing can be heard. Voice two. Go, please, I'm sorry. I'll be okay, just... Static. You bobs frantically, racing down a forest path. Heavy breathing. Distant singing. Two minutes, 25 seconds. Voice one. Whisper. No, 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 no. Two minutes, 30 seconds. View lunges up, then drops to the ground. The view is now centered on a face. Voice one sobbing. No, no, please, please no. Two minutes, 38 seconds. The face looks up and smiles. Voice one, sobbing. No, no. Voice two, begins to sing. End log. It brings you to another SCP? What? What? Let's go back. There's this, and then what's this one? It led me to this one. Item 432. Euclid. Containment procedures. A fenced uh, perimeter has been established around SCP-437. Um, Foundation horticultists are to be kept on site, blah, blah, blah. Um, testing by um, ethics committee. Um, damn feds investigate. Oh my god, what the fuck? Okay, this is short, so we can read this. Um... All POI associated with SCP-437 and place them in Foundation Cussie along with their children. SCP-437 is a large grove of trees located in Camp Lakewood, Illinois. It is contained of 64 instances of SCP-437-A. 437-A are numerous trees common to the Northwoods. Each instance has several uh, cankers. A typical interior structure is see below, and rather than sap, it contains significant quantities of human blood. SCP-437 uh, was discovered by Foundation in 2011, 20 years after the summer camp's closure. Embody, um, employment records for Camp Lakewood have not been found. All persons who attended Camp Lakewood during the summer of 1991 are persons of interest, and they are still currently at large. Agent Bennett, subject, POI, interviewer, did you attend Camp Lakewood in 1991? Is that what this is about? Oh yeah, that was, wow, two decades ago. <laughs> wow, oh, I was 15. I think that really takes me back. What do you remember from your time there? Best summer ever. <laughs> it was an amazing place. I was so sad to go, especially when we found out it was closing. I made so many friends there, so many great memories. I think. Yeah, that's where I had my first kiss. Did you see any strange trees of, to the south of camp? Huh? Two, kilometer, uh, two kil kilometers to the south. There's a grove of trees. Are you familiar with it? I mean, sure. We all were. In what sense? <laughs> I mean, it was goofy kid stuff, you know? Stories the counselors would tell around the campfire. Spooky trees down the southern trail. Something trapped inside of them. Go there at night. Press your ear against the bark and you can hear it singing. Singing? Yeah, like I said. Goofy kid stuff. Did you ever go there yourself? Silence. Miss Blanchette? Uh, uh, sorry? No, I, I never went there. Too scared, I guess. Uh, I, it, that was a pretty crazy summer, you know? Sometimes I really miss that place.
Wow. Okay. Email findings. Wow. Okay. Wait, I need to read this. I'm, re I'm skimming through this. Oh my god, this is going to be a long video. I'm sorry, guys. Um, radiographic and ultrasound imaging determined the presence of humanoid skeletal structures and soft tissue in each instance of SCP-437-A. Organs are woven into the trees themselves and appear to be semi-functional. Although severely deformed, most of the bones are consistent in adolescent teens between the ages of 13 and 16. In several cases, deformation of the jaw has been minimal. And this allowed us to identify certain instances of via dental uh, records taken before 1991. I don't think your POIs are campers, Jeremiah. I think we have sub-designated uh, um, them as part of SCP-437. Um, as for the SCP-437-A instances themselves, I want to look into the possibility of um, enthusiasing them. They have been here for 20 um, years. When you piss your ear against the bark, you can hear them. It's low and muffled, but you can hear them just fine. What the fuck? Okay, okay, this is getting more and more fucking scary. Basically, basically what I just fucking found out from this Craiglewood Park is that, okay, here's what I'm thinking. Maybe I'm wrong, maybe I'm right, but I don't fucking know. Basically, these kids went to fucking camp, right? Right? And, um, when they went to this fucking camp as kids, they actually went to this little for uh, forested area, which actually is SCP- basically fucking ate them and made a duplicate of them. So, as the fucking tree decided to fucking eat them and keep them inside of this fucking tree in prison, that other face that they were scared of was actually another version of them. And the ones that they were fucking interviewing wasn't real children. That was the fucking SCP that they were talking to. That's why they didn't want to fucking keep talking about it. Because they didn't want to be found out. Holy fucking shit, this is scary. Uh, maybe maybe I'm just overthinking it. But this makes it so much fucking more scary. And it adds up, because most of them fucking went there around, like, you know, when, uh... The latest date was when they were 12. And most of these bodies in here are, like, 13 to 16 year olds. Meaning that they aged up to that point, and that's when they fucking are dead. That's when they fucking killed them. Holy fucking shit! This is so cool. This is a fucking cool one. This one would definitely be a 9 out of 10, 10 out of 10. Like, you know, I would give this... Because it's just... It's so fucking tight. So well put together. I, I don't know. I fucking love this one. This one's fucking great. Fucking love it. And he, and he managed to put two SCPs together. Like, how the fuck do you do that? Like, I don't know. I think, I think it's just cool. I, I fucking love this one. It's fucking great. I fucking love this one. Fucking great. Holy shit. 10 out of fucking 10. I better fucking end this here because this is such a long ass video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Um, if you guys enjoyed this, please let me down down in the comments below. Sorry again, this is a long one, but you know, I fucking love this. Super fucking fun. Um, all I want to say, guys, is if you haven't already, please sub, comment down what you guys would like to see next, and maybe what you wouldn't want to see. Um, I have a Twitch and a Discord, so if you guys would maybe join there, that'd be fucking awesome. Um, and, uh, you know, maybe give a like because that was a lot of fucking reading. Um, but all I want to say, guys, is smile, keep your head up, and um, other than this longest video, um, let's fight for a future so bright. It's so much for your eyes. I'll see you guys in the next video, guys. And my name is Blue Digit. Signing out. Love you guys. Bye. Whoop.